This video is the perfect guide for anyone looking to install a CCTV camera in a lift or elevator. We'll walk you through a wireless solution that is reliable, economical, and built to last, making it ideal for long-term security needs. With this setup, you can avoid complex cabling, enjoy an easy installation process, and get the peace of mind that comes from knowing your elevator is secure. This IP-based CCTV system for elevators uses Wi-Fi access points to establish wireless communication between the lift cabin and the basement shaft. This approach enables seamless video transmission without the need for complex cabling inside the elevator shaft. Using this technique, you can integrate IP cameras installed in elevators from any brand with your existing or new DVR or NVR recorders. For example, in this setup, we're using TP-Link outdoor CPE devices to act as both the transmitter and receiver between the lift shaft and lift cabin, creating a wireless bridge for video transmission. This approach eliminates the need for extensive wiring, providing a stable, high-quality connection while keeping installations simple and efficient. Note, in this setup, wireless specifically refers to the connection between the Wi-Fi CPE devices located in the lift basement shaft and the lift cabin. All other connections will be wired. This outdoor CPE comes with a PO, power over Ethernet, adapter, allowing it to receive both data and power through the same LAN cable. This means you can install the CPE in its designated location without needing a separate power source. For example, one CPE adapter can be placed near the NVR or DVR recorder, and you can extend the LAN cable to the lift basement shaft to connect the transmitter CPE. The PO adapter features two LAN ports, one PO port specifically for connecting the CPE, customer premises equipment, and a second LAN port for connecting a PC, network switch, or camera. The provided diagram illustrates all the typical connection setups for installing a CCTV camera in a lift. Both outdoor CPE units are of the same model and specifications. By simply changing the configuration, one can be set as the transmitter and the other as the receiver, depending on your specific requirements. Let's begin the configuration. To access the CPE, customer premises equipment, first, connect the PO, power over Ethernet, adapter's PO port directly to the CPE using an appropriate Ethernet cable. This connection supplies both power and data to the CPE, ensuring it operates effectively. Next. Connect the other LAN port of the PO adapter to the LAN port of your PC or laptop. This step establishes a network connection between your computer and the CPE, allowing you to access its configuration interface. After making these connections, power up the PO adapter. The power adapter has a power LED that confirms it is powered on, which will activate the CPE and initiate communication between your PC or laptop and the CPE. Once you power up the PO adapter, the CPE power LED will glow, indicating that it is receiving power. Additionally, the LAN LED will illuminate once the connection between the PO adapter and your PC's LAN adapter is established. Other LEDs on the CPE will light up once the mode has been configured successfully. To access the CPE web interface, you need to assign a static IP address to your LAN adapter. To do this, right-click on the Network icon in the System Tray or navigate to Network and Internet Settings. From there, select the Ethernet option to access your network settings. 
In the Ethernet settings, locate the IPv4 settings to enter the IP address. Set the IP address to 192.168.0.10 and the subnet mask to 255.255.255.0. This configuration will allow your PC to communicate with the CPE properly. Open a web browser, such as Chrome, Firefox, or Edge, and type the default IP address http colon slash slash 192.168.0.254 of the CPE into the address field at the top of the browser window. Press enter to navigate to this address. If you encounter an error message stating, your connection is not private, this is a common security warning that appears when accessing devices using a self-signed SSL certificate. To proceed, scroll down the page to find the option for Advanced. Click on this option to reveal more details about the warning. After clicking Advanced, you will see a message indicating that your connection is not secure. Look for the link that says Proceed to 192.168.0.254, Unsafe, and click on it. This action will allow you to bypass the warning and access the login interface of the CPE where you can enter your credentials to configure the device. The default username and password are both admin. Enter admin in both fields. Next, select your region based on your country and choose a preferred language, optional. After that, check the box next to Terms of Use to indicate your agreement. Finally, click the Login button to access the settings and set a new password for the CPE. Enter your new username and password for the CPE. Once you've filled in the fields, click Finish to complete the setup. This will grant you access to the CPE configuration page. Since we are going to use this CPE as a transmitter access point, you can easily enable that mode in the Quick Setup menu. On the Quick Setup page, check the Access Point option and then click the Next button. Here, you need to modify the IP address according to your CCTV system. For example, if your NVR, DVR, or modem slash router network is in the 192.168.1.x series, set the IP address accordingly. The following diagram will illustrate this setup. Note, the internet modem or router connection is optional. Depending on your DVR or NVR and the IP camera network series, plan to set the IP address accordingly. As per our CCTV network configuration, we set the IP address of the transmitter to 192.168.1.180. Once you enter the IP address, click the, the Next button to access the Wireless AP Settings page. Here, you can set the Wi-Fi SSID and password for the transmitter to securely connect with the receiver CPE. In the SSID field, enter a Wi-Fi name that is easily recognizable, incorporating relevant details like the block number, lift name, or area. For example, you might use block A underscore lift cameras or cameras in block A. A descriptive SSID is especially useful for managing multiple cameras across different locations, making it easier to troubleshoot connectivity issues or access camera feeds. By choosing a clear SSID, you streamline setup and maintenance for your camera network. Select WPAPSK in the security field to set the password for this Wi-Fi. WPAPSK, Wi-Fi Protected Access Pre-Shared Key, is a standard security protocol that encrypts your Wi-Fi connection, ensuring that only authorized devices can access the network. When creating this password, choose something strong yet memorable, as it will be required during the configuration of the receiver CPE. Additionally, enable the Max Stream option to optimize the Wi-Fi signal. This feature enhances connectivity and performance, especially in environments with multiple connected devices, helping to reduce interference. After making these selections, click the, the Next button, which will direct you to a page displaying all your configured Wi-Fi information, including the SSID and security settings. Review your settings to ensure everything is correct. Finally, click the Finish button to apply the settings and complete the configuration process.
Once the setup is completed, you may see a, this site can't be reached, message on the CPE configuration page. This is because the IP address configuration was changed during the setup. To access the CPE interface again, enter the new IP address in your web browser's address bar. Additionally, ensure your PC's LAN adapter is configured with a compatible static IP address to match the updated network range, allowing seamless access to the CPE configuration page. For example, once the CPE configuration is complete, disconnect the LAN cable from the PC and connect the CPE's LAN port to the DVR or NVR network. If your PC is connected to the same network, you can access the CPE's web interface again by entering the new IP address set during configuration to verify the settings. Enter your customized login credentials to access the configuration page. After logging in, navigate to the Status menu to view comprehensive information about the access point, transmitter, including Wi-Fi details such as the network name, SSID, connected devices, Wi-Fi signal strength, MAC addresses of connected devices, and more. This status page will be particularly useful after configuring the receiver CPE and cameras, as it provides a quick overview of all connected equipment and network performance. The configured CPE is now actively transmitting Wi-Fi signals, indicated by the mode and signal LEDs on the device. These LEDs provide a visual confirmation that the CPE is operating in the correct mode and is successfully broadcasting the network signal. This time, prepare the second outdoor CPE to be configured as a client, receiver, for camera side connectivity. Connect the PO, power over Ethernet, adapters PO port directly to the CPE using an appropriate Ethernet cable. This connection supplies both power and data to the CPE, ensuring it operates effectively. Next, connect the other LAN port of the PO adapter to the LAN port of your PC or laptop. This step establishes a network connection between your computer and the CPE, allowing you to access its configuration interface, just as you did with the previous CPE. After making these connections, power up the PO adapter. The power adapter has a power LED that confirms it is powered on, activating the CPE and initiating communication between your PC or laptop and the CPE. Once you power up the PO adapter, the CPE power LED will glow, indicating that it is receiving power. Additionally, the LAN LED will illuminate once the connection between the PO adapter and your PC's LAN adapter is established. Other LEDs on the CPE will light up once the mode has been configured successfully. To access the CPE web interface, you need to assign a static IP address to your LAN adapter. To do this, right-click on the Network icon in the System Tray or navigate to Network and Internet Settings. From there, select the Ethernet option to access your network settings. In the Ethernet settings, locate the IPv4 settings to enter the IP address. Set the IP address to 192.168.0.10 and the subnet mask to 255.255.255.0. This configuration will allow your PC to communicate with the CPE properly. Open a web browser, such as Chrome, Firefox, or Edge, and type the default IP address http colon slash slash 192.168.0.254 of the CPE into the address field at the top of the browser window. Press enter to navigate to this address. If you encounter an error message stating, your connection is not private, this is a common security warning that appears when accessing devices using a self-signed SSL certificate. To proceed, scroll down the page to find the option for Advanced. Click on this option to reveal more details about the warning. After clicking Advanced, you will see a message indicating that your connection is not secure. Look for the link that says Proceed to 192.168.0.254, Unsafe, and click on it. This action will allow you to bypass the warning and access the login interface of the CPE, where you can enter your credentials to configure the device. The default username and password are both admin. Enter admin in both fields. 
Next, select your region based on your country and choose a preferred language, optional. After that, check the box next to Terms of Use to indicate your agreement. Finally, click the Login button to access the settings and set a new password for the CPE. Enter your new username and password for the CPE. Once you've filled in the fields, click Finish to complete the setup. This will grant you access to the CPE configuration page. Since we are going to use this CPE as a receiver client, you can easily enable that mode in the Quick Setup menu. Note, the internet modem or router connection is optional. Depending on your DVR or NVR and the IP camera network series, plan to set the IP address accordingly. As per our CCTV network configuration, we have set the IP address of the receiver to 192.168.1.190. The following diagram may help you understand this configuration. Once you enter the IP address, click the, the Next button to access the Wireless Client Settings page. Here, you can select and connect to the transmitter's Wi-Fi signal to communicate wirelessly with the CCTV DVR or NVR network. In the SSID of Remote AP field, click the corresponding Survey button to scan and retrieve the list of available Wi-Fi SIDs in your vicinity. From this list, check the box next to the transmitter SSID, which represents the access point you want to connect to, and then click the Connect button located at the bottom of the page. Next, you will need to enter the Wi-Fi password for the transmitter access point in the designated field to authenticate the connection. After entering the password, click the Next button. The subsequent page will verify the configuration settings you've selected. Finally, to complete the process, click the Finish button. This action will establish the Wi-Fi communication between the transmitter and receiver, enabling seamless connectivity for your devices. Once the setup is completed, you may encounter a This site can't be reached message on the CPE configuration page. This happens because the IP address was changed during the setup process. To access the CPE interface again, enter the newly configured IP address into your web browser's address bar. Additionally, ensure that your PC's LAN adapter is configured with a static IP address compatible with the updated network range. For example, after completing the CPE configuration, disconnect the LAN cable from the PC and connect your PC to the CCTV network. You can access the CPE's web interface again by entering the new IP address that was set during the configuration. This will allow you to verify that the receiver CPE is properly connected to the transmitter, confirming that the transmitter's Wi-Fi is successfully linked to the receiver. Enter your customized login credentials to access the configuration page. After logging in, navigate to the Status menu to view detailed information about the client, receiver, including connected Wi-Fi devices, signal strength, MAC addresses, and more. Note, the receiver CPE is now being accessed wirelessly through the transmitter's Wi-Fi connection. On the transmitter CPE status page, go to the Wireless Signal Quality section, where you'll see a list of connected devices. The connected station will indicate the receiver, client, CPE is successfully connected. Additionally, on the receiver CPE, the signal LED will light up, indicating that the Wi-Fi connection with the transmitter has been successfully established. This visual confirmation ensures that the wireless link between the transmitter and receiver is active and functioning correctly. To simplify troubleshooting, label the transmitter and receiver CPEs with a marker or sticker. On the transmitter, write, transmitter, its IP address, and the Wi-Fi SSID. For the receiver, mark it as, receiver, include its IP address, e.g., 192.168.1.190, and note the transmitter's SSID. This will help you easily identify each device and their settings during setup or when resolving issues.
once you have completed the configuration, you can install the devices in their designated locations. Typically, the transmitter is placed at the basement lift shaft, while the receiver is positioned at the bottom of the lift cabin. The following image will illustrate this setup for better understanding. Camera Connection Finally, connect the IP camera to the receiver's CPE to establish a wireless link with the CCTV recorder, allowing you to stream the camera feed directly to the CCTV system. You can use any brand of DVR or NVR, along with IP cameras, to connect with these wireless transmitters and receivers. For demonstration purposes, we have shown a TP-Link VGI camera connected to the CCTV network. We selected this camera for several key reasons. First, it features a 2.8mm lens, which is beneficial for capturing a wider field of view. This lens allows for effective monitoring of short distances, making it particularly suitable for enclosed spaces like lift cabins, where broader coverage is essential for ensuring safety and security. The camera's compact design is another advantage, it is smaller in size compared to standard vandal-proof IP cameras. This smaller profile allows for easy installation on the lift ceiling without taking up excessive space or being obtrusive, ensuring that it blends seamlessly into the environment. Furthermore, the camera is vandal-proof, which is crucial for maintaining functionality in high-risk areas. This feature ensures that the camera can withstand impacts and tampering attempts, providing enhanced durability and protection in challenging environments. Overall, this camera combines a wide lens, compact design, and robust construction, making it a reliable choice for effective surveillance in lift cabins and other security-sensitive locations. Note. When selecting a camera, make sure it includes both LAN and DC power input connectors. The LAN port will connect to the PO adapter's LAN port on the receiver CPE for data transmission. Meanwhile, the external DC power supply will connect to the camera's DC input pin, supplying the necessary power for its operation. Connect the IP camera's LAN port to the LAN port of the receiver CPE's PO adapter using a CAT6 Ethernet cable. This connection enables data communication between the camera and the receiver. Additionally, connect an external DC 12V 2 amp power adapter to the camera's DC input pin to provide the necessary power. Note, the AC supply for the power adapter should be sourced from the lift roof to ensure optimal installation and safety. Once the camera is powered up, the LAN port LED on the receiver CPE will illuminate, indicating a successful connection between the camera and the receiver. This LED status confirms that data communication is established, ensuring the camera is ready for operation within the CCTV network. The connected camera's IP address can be viewed in the web interface of the receiver CPE, enabling you to add the camera directly to your CCTV recorder. If your CCTV DVR or NVR cannot detect the camera's IP address during the setup process, checking the CPE web interface can help you identify the camera's IP, making manual addition easier. This step is particularly useful for troubleshooting, ensuring you can quickly locate and connect your camera within the network. Enter the camera's IP address in your browser to access its interface. When using the VGI IP camera for the first time, it must be activated before it can be used. During the initial setup, you'll need to configure the camera, including setting a static IP address. This process ensures that the camera has a fixed IP for easy access and integration with the CCTV system. Follow the camera's setup wizard to complete the activation and configuration steps. Select your region based on your country and time zone, and choose your preferred language, optional, then click the Next button. On the next page, create a new username and password for the IP camera. After entering the details, click Next. You will then be prompted to answer security questions and provide a recovery email address. 
This information will be useful in case you forget the camera password, ensuring easy account recovery. Once you've filled in all the required details, click Next to complete the initialization steps. This will finalize the initial setup, activating the camera and preparing it for use in your CCTV network. Now that the camera's live stream is accessible on the laptop via the transmitter and receiver, the next step is to integrate it with your DVR or NVR for centralized recording and monitoring alongside other cameras in your CCTV system. Before adding the camera, ensure it is configured with a local static IP address that aligns with your CCTV network's IP series to avoid conflicts and ensure smooth integration. To set up a static IP for the camera, navigate to Settings, then select Network Settings. Under Basic Settings, locate the IPv4 mode drop-down menu and select the Static IP option. Here, you can enter or modify the IP address, subnet mask, and gateway based on your CCTV network configuration. For example, you could set the camera IP address to 192.168.1.201 according to your network setup. The following diagram in the guide will further illustrate this configuration. This ensures the camera remains fixed in the network and easily accessible by the DVR slash NVR for recording and monitoring. After changing the IP address, the camera will reboot automatically. You will need to enter the newly configured IP address in your web browser to access the camera again from your PC. Note, this VGI IP camera has the ONVIF protocol enabled by default, allowing seamless integration with any DVR or NVR that supports the ONVIF standard. No additional configuration is required for this compatibility, making the setup process quicker and more straightforward. Now, let's add the VGI camera to the recorder. In this demonstration, we've used a Hikvision DVR, utilizing the ONVIF protocol. The process is straightforward and similar for other brands of cameras and recorders, DVRs or NVRs, that support ONVIF. You can follow the same steps to integrate different brands of cameras with their respective recorders. Go to the DVRs, Camera Management, section, then navigate to, IP Channel. If the DVR or NVR cannot automatically detect the camera, you can manually add it by entering the camera's IP address, protocol, select ONVIF, port number, 2020 for VGI cameras, and the camera's login credentials. This manual process ensures the camera is properly integrated into your CCTV system, allowing for seamless recording and centralized viewing alongside your other cameras. That's it. The Lyft camera has been successfully added to the CCTV recording device via the outdoor Wi-Fi CPE. You can now monitor and record footage from the Lyft camera as part of your integrated CCTV system. In this demo video, we showcase a specific brand for setting up cameras in lifts and elevators. However, you can apply this Wi-Fi transmitter and receiver method to connect lift and elevator cameras to any existing or new IP CCTV system, regardless of the camera brand or recorder used, utilizing the TP-Link Outdoor CPE. We put a lot of effort into creating this video, and we appreciate your support. Please encourage us by liking, sharing, and subscribing to our channel. Your support motivates us to produce even more valuable content. Thank you.